I got a message from uh, a friend um, who's a trainer and was asking a question about a dog that before the dog is geared up, the dog will give all sorts of monkey business. So as you're going to put the prong collar on the dog, the dog will act a fool, jump up, you know, just totally misbehave and, and not just like excited, but being really pushy, really bratty, really snotty. And, and I wouldn't say aggressive, but just uh, so rambunctious and bratty to the point of creating a possible risky situation where somebody get knocked down or something like that, or if the dog escalated, it could get worse. But that's just one dog. I've heard this over and over and over again, um, where people are trying to get the tools onto their dogs and before they can get the tools that work really well for them and their dogs on, the dogs give them a hard time because the dogs are smart and the dogs realize, well, hey, if you're, if you're limited to being able to actually interact with me and being able to correct any behavior that you don't like, only if you've got these tools on me, well, then I'm kind of scot-free unless those tools are on me and dogs pick that up super quick. And so that's why having other options are super critical to bridging that gap. And that gap is, you don't have a tool on me, so you can't tell me what to do, you're not the boss of me, right? Okay, there's a couple different things, a couple different aspects of this, a couple different approaches. So one, let's talk about the obvious one, uh, which is a bonker. So if you don't know what a bonker is, look up bonker training um, on YouTube. Uh, you probably heard me talk about it before. And one of the great things, well, there's a few great things about the bonker. Um, I'll see if I can try and keep it brief, but one, it's really cheap. Um, <laughs> two, they're very easy to use. And three, they have a different effect on dogs than a lot of other tools do. And if you've heard me talk about kind of the hierarchy of tools that de-escalate dogs, in that hierarchy, uh, bonkers are pretty high up as far as in the positive way of de-escalating dogs. You know, prong and e-collar have huge upsides and can be very, very valuable. That's why I like to have a lot of tool options and that's why I encourage you guys not to get stuck on just I just use e-collar or I just use prong or I just use a bonker. Like all of them have their limitations. All of them have their pros and have their cons. You want great training at a distance where you don't actually have a leash on and huge reliability. E-collar is going to be your thing. You want great control with minimal, you know, great directional control with, with minimal um, effort and a lot of safety and security without a lot of physical kind of force and stuff like that. Prong collars are amazing for that, but not so great if you're trying to have a recall at a distance or not so great if you've got a dog that's highly reactive on walks and then you go and give them a pop and they get more reactive. So those are some, some, some of the limitations, but some, some also, so the pros and the cons. And the bonker, pros, de-escalation, inexpensive, easy to learn and easy to deploy, um, but limited as far as it's not going to give you great reliability with recall and it's not going to give you directional control on a walk like a prong, uh, leash and prong wheel. So you, if, if I can get anything across in this video, it's the concept of having a whole bunch of tools that you can utilize for different situations. Uh, I, I know it would be much more simple if there was just one tool and that was all you needed. And, and there are dogs out there and owners out there that, that just use one tool and they do okay. Um, but that's largely dependent on the dog being kind of a good fit for that situation. For more challenging dogs, you really do need to have um, a, a multitude of options. And when I talk to shadows or interns or anybody I'm teaching, I liken it to a boxer, right? Um, and anybody who's shattered with me or anything will, will recognize this, but I liken it to a boxer who's only got one move and the boxer just has a jab. Pop, pop, pop. And this isn't to in any way like conflate like hitting a dog or anything like that. So everybody just take it easy. It's, it's just, it's strictly uh, an analogy uh, to, to, to make a comparison here. And so 
if you think about a boxer who only has a jab, he goes out into a, into a fight with a boxer who's got a jab, a, a, a good strong right, a good combination, a left hook, uppercut, all of this stuff, that boxer that only has the jab is going to be in big trouble. So I, I liken that concept to the same thing as an owner or even a trainer who only has one primary tool or really just one tool, period, and that's all they use. And then when the tool doesn't work in certain situations, they don't really have any other options. So I prefer to have a ton of options and I will use them at will depending on what I think is going to be best for the dog. So that all said, when we're talking about the pros and the cons of the different tools, the cons of an e-collar is if it's not on and if your dog's coming out of the crate or something like that, or you're starting your day and you don't have the tool on and your dog is uh, collar wise, which I, I'm yet to see a, see a dog that hasn't been able to figure that out. Now, people can argue and say, well, uh, my dog isn't collar wise. My dog still behaves and still does what it should do. Sure, you can use motivation and all sorts of things like that. It really depends on the dog's personality. And if the dog's got a strong enough, willful enough, pushy enough personality to push back against your stuff, then uh, it doesn't matter. All the motivation, all of the relationship, all the stuff in the world won't matter if the dog says, I really want to do this thing and you don't have the tools on me to stop me. So if some people could assert that that's just poor dog training. I assert that it's just reality with certain dogs, with a lot of dogs. So if you don't have the e-collar on, you're kind of out of luck. If you don't have the prong collar on, you're kind of out of luck. What can you do when you have to deal with a dog that knows that you don't have the tools on and is taking advantage of it and taking advantage of you and hard timing you because you don't have the ability to share a consequence that they value in the moment when they don't have these, these uh, the good tools on. So that's when having a bonker can be an amazing, amazing tool. And the person asking the question was, was sending me videos of going in to work with dogs and, and, and this one dog in particular was just like manhandling her and giving her a super hard time because it knew, it was like, you don't have that tool on me yet. So, and, and then as soon as the prong was on, the dog was cool. And the dog was like, yeah, we're, we're good to go. But the dog was super hard timing her. So my recommendation was use a bonker, go in. And the moment you see the tiniest bit of escalation, and I don't mean the dogs barking, jumping, spinning around. I mean, the moment you see the smallest emanation of an escalation, no, bang, bonker. Boom. The dog goes, whoa, you can actually correct me without having any of the tools on? And it's a game changer. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this already know that. And then I'm sure a lot of you watching this are like, whoa, that makes a ton of sense, right? It's like dogs are smart. They realize the tools aren't on. They realize they can do other things. It's like I always talk about, why do you drive differently with a policeman behind you? And why do you drive differently when the policeman pulls off the freeway? It's the same concept. Anyways, the recommendation was use the bonker as the bridge until you get the other tools on, right? And that's not like, oh, we have to create this entire framework because we, we haven't done any training with the dog and the dog doesn't understand the commands. No, it's, it's not about the dog not knowing what's expected. It's about the dog choosing to do otherwise. Even with all sorts of rewards involved and things like that, you still have a dog Who's, who's got their personality and their drives and, 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 and their own, uh, their demeanor and their, and their own sense of what's rewarding and what's worth taking, you know, risks for, you know, of consequences. And so using a bonker to be able to bridge that space between where the dog is like, yeah, I know what you want from me, but I'm not going to do it. And then whoop, bonker, oh man. I guess before the collar goes on or the prong goes on, I guess you can correct me. I guess I'll give you my best stuff. I guess I'll drive really nice because the cop is behind me, right? Which is basically what we're talking about doing, having the ability to issue or share consequences at any time.